What's going on, Will Freeman, RevolutionaryLifestyleDesign.com, talking to you today about how to survive and thrive in the coming age of AI, automation, robotics, massive changes happening. Massive changes have been happening since the birth of the internet. They are going to continue to change. Here's how to survive and thrive in that coming age. Number one, don't rely on the government. Hearing a lot about this universal basic income, $1,000 a month. Number one, uh, $1,000 is not nearly enough to survive or thrive in a Western country. Number two, they can take it away at any time. Number three, it's going to be factored into all the prices. Meaning, if you are part of the low income bracket that gets this $1,000, it's going to be like welfare. It'll become factored into the price of the rent um, within three or four months. This is how economics works. It'll be factored into the lowest common denominator of the economy, meaning Prices for things like McDonald's will go up because, um, you know, prices fall in line naturally with with demand and what people can pay. And uh, when landlords see that, they're going to be able to charge more for um, the lower income housing. And it very quickly will be absorbed by the economy. That's my opinion, at least. I don't know if you know, I'm not an economist, but... Uh, uh, I do play one on TV. No, seriously, um, either way, the government's not going to help you. And Social Security, stuff like that, is not going to exist when uh, you retire. I don't know if you know, but uh, it's not like you're saving that money somewhere. You're paying for people to retire now. Um, and for that system to work when you retire, you're going to have to depend on the generation 30 or 40 years from now to pay for you in a system, um, Social Security, that's already bankrupt. In America, it's not looking much better in Canada. Um, if you're from the Netherlands and things like that, it's unlikely that that level of, of care will exist when you retire. Um, and either way, it's not enough to live well. Number two, don't rely on an employer. Okay, that's almost as bad as the government. Um, Become an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship will survive robotics. It'll survive. It'll never be outsourced to China. There's always going to be entrepreneurs because there's always going to be people running businesses, taking risks, deciding what to do. The robots will work for the entrepreneur. Okay. Um, there's always going to be wheelers and dealers. That's just how life is. And that's the great thing about being an entrepreneur. Um, and you can always move in and out of different industries. Okay. If you're working a job, and let's say you're a computer programmer and all of a sudden they found a robot that can do that or they found a cheaper uh, person to do it in the Philippines, you're fucked. You're out of a job. Um, and, you know, your skill sets might not be able to land you a job somewhere else. But if you had transitioned into being an entrepreneur who sells programming services, you just hire somebody. If, if your skill set's no longer... Um, you know, marketable per se in that particular niche, um, you're, you outsource it to a company um, or you hire somebody because you, you, the important thing is that you have the client, you have the relationship with the client, okay? If you're not doing that code by hand, um, as long as it's getting done, the client's gonna be happy, all right? So even if you have to buy the robot to do the coding uh, or buy the AI bot to do the coding, right? It's not a big deal because you're an entrepreneur. You have the money to do that. You're in the right position and you have the client. That's the key. You have the client who's paying you. So entrepreneurship is never going out of style. Um, if you don't believe me, you can read a book called The End of Jobs talking about, you guessed it, the end of jobs, a lot of jobs being automated. As You know, in the 1800s in America, it was like there were no large companies, really. Um, the person who made your shoes was you know, the cobbler, the person who did uh, iron work was the blacksmith, right? As time has gone on, those jobs are becoming either, you know, products outsourced to large corporations. Um, and we will see more of those types of jobs um, become, you know, done, done by robots. You're seeing this with factory workers. Um, even now in China, you, you know, we outsourced our manufacturing base to China, but within China right now, um, they're starting to, to build robots that can build these 
smartphones um, from start to finish. So those factory jobs in China won't exist. Um, bad news if you're a factory worker, but hey, you know, that's why you got to get into this entrepreneurship now. Um, now, caveat, I'm not telling you to quit your job today if you have a job. Um, jobs are great because they allow you to earn money and save money. Okay, I'm not knocking having a job. I'm just knocking having a job forever. My key to financial freedom was my sales job. And if you want to earn more than six figures and you don't have a professional designation, um, a sales job is the best way to do it. And it's also the best way to learn the most marketable, profitable skill in the world, which is sales on someone else's dime. Stack your cash so you can build your exit plan and learn how to hunt for yourself and, and never have to rely on um, someone else's table scraps, which brings me to point number three, learn how to sell, okay? To, th to thrive in the concrete jungle that we live in, you need to become a hunter, okay? And we don't hunt for food directly anymore. We hunt for it indirectly through hunting for money. And money is the resources, Money is the timber, the food, all the things that we as men used to 10,000 years ago would go out and hunt and, and create and build and all this stuff. That's all functions by money in our current society. Like it or not, but that's how, the, that's how it is. So there's no point fighting that. Um, you have to learn how to hunt uh, and that is learning how to sell. Otherwise, you will always, always be living off of someone else's table scraps. Okay, you might not have thought about it that way, but unless you're hunting for yourself, you're living off of what someone else hunt, hunts. You're living off that entrepreneur and his sales team, um, and you're getting the leftovers, and you're never getting a good deal. I mean, when I was in sales, you know, including salary and benefits, maybe I took home like, I don't know, 20% of what I brought in. 80% was going back to the company. Um, so... I was always making significantly less than I was worth than I could bring in. And that might not be, um, what's the word, completely apparent to you if you're not in a sales facing uh, position. But it is apparent when you're in sales and you're bringing in, you're cold calling, you're bringing in 40, 50, 60,000 dollars a month, right? And you're taking home six figures, but you're sitting around thinking like, what the fuck am I doing here when I can come into a job with no leads um, no help, uh, no connections, and I can build a book of business that makes 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars a month um, from the phone for someone else. Okay. And that's the key skill that you need to learn. You're talking to me right now, or sorry, you're listening to me. I'm talking to you. You might be talking to me. Um, but uh, because I learned how to sell, that, that allowed me to build this business. Um, Side note, it was also a major motivation to get off the sales floor and to build a business where instead of me phoning people all day and doing the marketing, I used the internet, the technology of the internet to do the marketing for me, okay? You know, reaching 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 people a day. To me, that's like making 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 cold calls a day. Hey, you interested in this? Hey, you interested in this? You know, here's a solution to a problem. Here's a solution to a problem. 24 seven, um, I'm doing marketing through this organic content marketing and I'm starting to do ads to, um, to amplify that. And that's all sales, man. Um, and I owe a lot to those guys that, you know, those jobs that I hated, those people that I hated working for, you know, that built my financial freedom, uh, you know, saved my money. I can't tell you enough about learning sales. Sales is, is, is what makes you a hunter. Um, it's also how you stack your cash to get out, to have the runway to build your business. If you want to learn how to sell, just buy my book, How to Sell, revolutionarylifestyledesign.com forward slash products. Um, you won't regret it. Number four, sell a high ticket service. If you've got the choice between dealing with poor people who haggle in a low ticket service, that takes the same amount of time versus a high ticket service. I'm telling you, you want the high ticket service. Okay. Also, the reason I recommend um, guys doing a service business is, is multiple reasons. But within this video, 
um, there's going to be less disruption in the service business. There's going to be a lot more disruption in automation in the product-based businesses. In a service-based business, you know, 15 years from now, probably won't be a whole lot of difference in personal training. Okay, I don't think that robots are going to be training people in gyms 15 years ago. Okay, 15 years from now. Now I might be wrong, but I think that people are still going. You know, the reason people go to a personal trainer is not just to get the diet plan and the routine and the workout and all that stuff. There's so much of that available for free online. It's the psychology, it's someone holding them accountable, and it's a human being, okay? Not a fucking robot. Uh, same goes for my business. I don't think there's gonna be robots doing life coaching, um, complex solutions to people's problems, talking about their experience, how they've solved problems in their robot life. There's not gonna be massive disruption on that front. However, there will be a uh, major disruption in my business in terms of how people um, see my content and buy my products. Okay. Um, there will be massive disruption in online advertising. Okay. Now I've got somebody doing that for me. Um, I'm paying for that. And, you know, that's just going to come down to me having the money to pay for, you know, whether it's, you know, the bot, the right. I, I can't even imagine the complexity of advertising 15 years from now. But as long as I keep having the money to pay the guy to do it, uh, to get the results, I'm going to be good. Uh, as far as the organic content goes, there probably will be massive changes in that as well in, in terms of I might have to rely on someone to um, you know, use data mining or data analysis to find what the, what the um, title should be that I should use or, or some of the talking points that I should be using in the video. I don't particularly like that idea because, you know, a lot of this stuff I do is not for clickbait. It's, it's stuff that I really feel passionate about, but I might have to add uh, more of that stuff to get noticed as it continues to get, to get more competitive. Um, I'll see with time, but I'm sure that there will be changes in, in the way that um, I get noticed and keep getting attention. Uh, that being said, the biggest thing by far, by far, by far is me and you for your service business that you move online, having the money, right? Having the war chest, as long as you have the money, um, you're going to be able to pay for that advertising and be able to pay to get seen. All right. If you, if you look at Grant Cardone, there's no reason or there's no mystery why, you know, he really blew up in the last three or four years. I've been watching him before that. Uh, he just threw money at it. He spends a million dollars a month on advertising. When you have the money, you're going to get seen. Um, and assuming you're not a complete idiot and you're at least getting some return on your investment in your advertising, you're going to be making money, whether it's robots doing the advertising, whether it's, you know, aliens doing the advertising, was Martians doing, you know, wh whatever happens, you're going to be making money. Okay. Um, uh, one more thing, one, one, one commenter said, you know, Zillow might take out, um, real estate agents now. Yeah. Will real estate be disrupted? Sure. Um, but I started in sales over a decade ago. Okay. Over a decade ago. Um, when I started, people would tell me cold call was going to cold calling was going to be obsolete in the next couple of years. Cold calling is still going to exist as long as people have phones. Um, you'll still be able to close people on real estate deals as long as people exist, because it's, it's a product that they want. Will there be disruption? Sure. Um, will it put the real estate out of, agent out of business? 30 years from now, I don't know what it's going to look like. I, I feel like it's, it's the end of 2019 right now. I feel like 10 to 15 years from now, you'll still have income as a real estate agent, um, especially selling high ticket. And again, you shouldn't be in a service if you're not selling high ticket or graduating high ticket, okay? You know, if you read Ryan Surhan's book, he's one of the premier um, real estate brokers in America right now. You know, if you can look past his presentation, let's put it, you know, the, 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 he's selling houses that are $2 million to $200 million, okay? A guy buying a $20 million, $30 million, $40 million, $70 million New York penthouse or LA mansion, probably going to want to have a look at the house, probably going to want to talk to somebody. Most likely. I don't know if he's just going to buy that on Zillow with a click. Okay. 
And the reason that people want to talk to somebody for these complex deals is they want to be assured that they're doing the right thing. They're going to, you know, if you look at his method, and this is true of all sales, like people are going to go through so many emotional changes buying something. Is this the right from excitement to fear to pulling back? They want to know that they're going to be assured that they're doing the right thing by an expert, right? By an expert, because a good real estate agent is not going to put someone into, um, a home that's not a good fit for them, right? He's going to show them more inventory and, you know, tell them like, hey, you know, based on what he's looking for, like appreciation or something like that, like, hey, you should probably buy over here. You know, my friend does uh, real estate in, in Pattaya, Thailand, right? And he advises his clients like, hey, you don't want to go in that, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to pre-buy into that building because those types of developers have a history of not finishing the product and, you know, you know, coming away with your money. You don't want to buy in this development because there's going to be a new condo being built three months from now so that your view will be obstructed within eight months and you're going to be listening to construction for the next three years of your life in your brand new condo. You want to get in this building because it's right on the water and they can't build anything in front of it and it's built by a top level developer. Um, you know, the price is right because it's a distressed seller, et cetera, et cetera. A good real estate agent, if you can create a business around that, um, is always going to have value because there's going to be value to that expertise. Um, and people, especially for high ticket transactions, want that human interaction. In the same way, um, you know, people still want to go shopping in stores. That's why Amazon is starting physical stores. Um, I don't think physical shopping is going to go away. And... You know, there's still salesmen in Best Buy who work on commission. Um, I don't think that's fully going to go to go away either. I think that, um, you know, if somebody's in a store, when you have a good salesman there, you're going to get more out of them, you know, anywhere from 20 to 100% more on average. So with that being said, though, okay, even if there's massive disruption 10 years from now in real estate, Get your money up, dude. You could, you could be getting a couple mil out of the game, right? Um, and, and as long as you're an entrepreneur, you under, you start to understand business. You start to understand how to pivot, how to hire, you know, how to outsource things. You can move into the next deal, man. Um, and you have money, right? So that's the key, which brings us to number five, stacking cash. All right. If you're worried about disruption, if you're worried about all this stuff, Now's the time to stack your fucking money, dude. Now's the time to go hard, okay? It's always, now's always the time. Um, Cash pays for runway and cash makes sure you never have to go back to eating off of someone else's plate. Still a motivation to me till this day. My back's far against or far away from the wall. Has been for a long time um, by the grace of God. But, you know, that's still a motivation to me. Um... And probably always will be because I grew up poor. I got smacked by money a few times. Um, I'm always going to have more money fears than the average person. And it served me well uh, by motivating me to go hard. Um, But I'll tell you something, you know, cash pays for runway. It also pays for pivoting. So if something happens in your industry, you're an entrepreneur. um, It's not a big deal when you're sitting on 300 grand and you had a business that didn't have a whole lot of expenses to begin with, like a service business, right? And didn't have a whole lot of debt and didn't, or any debt, didn't have a whole lot of inventory, doesn't have a lot of physical costs. Not a big deal, all right? Especially when you're sitting on 300 grand, okay, you can afford to buy the AI or the robot or the robots or um, the right staff. Or if you're like me and you don't like having employees, you know, you have one or two, like half employees and, and instead of hiring staff, you outsource to companies who already have the business system and you pay them $3,000 a month to handle it. Okay, not a big deal if there's, if there's some disruption in your industry when you're sitting on cash, okay? I had a client of mine who had a cleaning business and we were helping him scale up and we we can you know we we had a conversation of you know cleaning might be um, replaced by actual robots like right now they have those little tiny robots that go around your floor but they pretty much suck 
um, 15 years from now, there could be a robot that can scrub the bathroom and all these things. And I said, look, the cleaning business isn't going to die. Okay. You know, instead of hiring people and paying them, you're just going to be buying robots and servicing them. And, you know, the people that you hire will be to, to, to manage, um, to tinker with the robot or, or whatever, whatever it means. Right. But you're still going to have to go get, go out and get human clients, right? People are still going to want to talk to most likely another human to get them to sign up for your site, or maybe they don't, maybe you, you, you know, it's fully automated online. Um, but you've made your money so you can put money into the online advertising and you manage the operations and manage the people who, who, um, service the robots, like the cleaning business, the real estate business, the personal training business, all these service businesses are not going to die. The demand is still going to be there. Um, you just might have to pivot. Okay. But when you're sitting on 200, 300, 400, 600, 800, thousand dollars, two million dollars, like a lot of my clients are, the pivot's not a big deal. You know, might be a little more investment here. But ultimately it'll create more opportunities because a lot of your competitors probably won't um adapt properly. Or it'll put a lot of guys uh out of business. Just like with with drop shipping where there's so many of these low cost guys trying to come in um to the game. Um you know, whereas guys who've already been successful who are ahead of the curve or, or drop shipping, you know, carburetors and stuff that has to come over on a boat because there's less competition and it's $2,000 a pop or something like that. Um, you know, there's going to be an opportunity there. But the biggest way to capitalize on that opportunity is to stack your fucking cash, man, to have that cash. The cash is the greatest skill as an entrepreneur by far. More than intelligence, more than programming skills. Having a bunch of money, that's the, that's the biggest skill that you can have, okay? Um, so now's the time to be greedy. Now's the time to get that cash if you're worried. Same, same solution as I'm always telling you, go get that money, okay? Um, if you don't have money, aim for six figures a year. Aim for six figures in the bank account. Try and live off 30%. If you do have money, aim for seven figures a year and seven figures in the bank account. Um, and, and, and think bigger, okay? You know, I've got a 23-year-old client. This is a three million, just did a $3 million exit from his startup. I've got another 21-year-old client. We scaled him up to 5,000, from 5,000 a month in revenue to 220,000 per month in his product-based business. Can't take all the credit for it. That boy's a beast. Um, you know, had a client, multimillionaire, making um, take home anywhere from 150 to $200,000 a month on his online business. Okay. Um, you know, it's really important if you don't have the right role models around you, um, to, to find them online, watch my stuff, um, watch, watch whoever's working for you, you know, and, um, today is still the best time to be alive, hands down. Okay. This is crazy. I'm talking to you from Eastern Europe. I'm from Canada. I've lived all over the world. I'm talking to you from my phone. I grew up with a fucking rotary telephone. I'm running this business primarily now through my phone. Okay. Um, making a lot of money. God willing, will continue. I mean, there's never been a better time. Even with the automation, it's going to create opportunity. The chaos is going to create opportunities for you when you're on top of the game. Okay, when your game is tight and your game should never be loose, you should always be on it. That's the secret. All right. So don't worry about that. Don't don't get into this. Go down that fear rabbit hole on YouTube. It's never been better to be alive. You, you know, with the Internet, it's the biggest equalizer. Um, you just got to go out there and, and be in the right vehicle, be in the service business, learn how to sell, get the high ticket service going, stack your cash, stay on top of your industry, stay on top of your game, stay learning, uh, stay on top of the trends, and you're going to be good, man. You're going to be better than good. You're going to be great. So much love to you. If you need help with this, check out my coaching, revolutionarylifestyledesign.com forward slash coaching. Stay tuned. 2020, how to play the game of life course is coming. It's back on deck. It's going to be big. Um, probably going to take me another eight months to do it, but it's coming. 
not stay tuned. If you, if you, and if you want to get your money right, just go to revolutionarylifestyledesign.com forward slash money. I've got a ton of free stuff on there. You don't even have to buy anything. You don't have to buy my sales book. Just go watch all those videos and read those articles. Much love to you. And talk to you soon.